Is there a Leatherman killer out there from one of these lesser known multi-tool brands who are doing things differently? Let's have a look. Leatherman are the undisputed market leader in multi-tools. In fact, their Wave model I have here has long been the best-selling multi-tool in the world and for good reason. Is there though another brand out there who can change the game? In this video, I compare some of the competition who live by their own rules. Let's start with the newest kid on the block, the GOAT tool. It was funded on Kickstarter to the tune of half a million dollars and I only recently received mine having waited two years for it. But you don't have to wait that long as they are now available to buy coming in at $120 for the standard tool set. And what you have here is a multi-tool where you choose the tool layout and configuration and swap them about in a matter of seconds. In short, you choose the tools you use and ditch the ones you don't. Also, GOAT guarantee their tools for 100 years and no need to send the whole thing back, of course, just the bit you need. So let's have a quick look round the tool I have here. Now it is actually a little bit utilitarian in design, which I actually quite like, and it includes this deep carry pocket clip. The weight of the configuration I've got here, incidentally, is a very respectable 215 grams or 7.6 ounces, and that's a bit lighter than a Leatherman Wave, which comes in at 240 grams or 8.5 ounces. And comparing the size, it's slightly longer than the Wave, but a little bit narrower and about the same thickness. The tool comes with this nicely embroidered and really well made Molly sheath, which has elasticated pockets on either side and also in the main compartment, so you can carry extra tools. Looking around the tool, the smooth surface here on the bottom is a striking surface or a light duty hammer and is a nice addition. The pliers open really smoothly and are spring loaded. And if I put it side by side with the wave, you can see that it is actually a little bit shorter and less pointy. In the plier head, we have replaceable wire cutters, which is always nice to see. And a nice touch here is that they are triangular in shape, which means there are actually three blades here compared with most multi-tools, which have one or none. Now I've noticed the plier handles don't fix in place, as you can see, and that could create a problem if the cutters get jammed on something, as can happen. Looking now at the other tools, and you will see that they are all externally accessible, which is really good to see. There are six tool slots on each side, giving a maximum of 12 tools, although some tools take up more than one slot. The main blade I've chosen for my configuration is non-locking, as you can see, and that means it's legal to carry in the UK, so that's a great option. Obviously, you can get locking blades for this, but you can also get different blade steel too. So, for example, you can get an S35 VN steel if the original 440C I've got here doesn't float your boat. And incidentally, the blade position can easily be swapped over to a left-handed configuration, which many will appreciate. If you can't have a blade at all, you could swap it out for something else like this file. And go have a range of tool options to choose from with no doubt more to follow soon. We have in here some really good sized scissors and these work really well as demonstrated by my scientific paracord snip test. Also on this side, I have a quarter inch bit driver socket with a double-ended Phillips screwdriver, which is what it comes with. And this is held in place magnetically uh, with this magnet here on the side. And quarter inch bits means lots of affordable and quality options are available to use. And if you happen to have the Leatherman flat bits, you can use those as well. They fit in here really nicely. And the benefit of these means a really compact carry. On the other side of the tool, we have this, which is a really interesting tool. This is a utility knife or scalpel blade, and that means this is super sharp and the blades can easily be changed. And one of the benefits of this system is 
that the tool can easily be removed for more precision cutting tasks. Then on the other side here, we have a wood saw or plastic saw, which is a nice addition to the tool set. Then we have these four tools here, which I will fan out. What we have here is a very large flathead cum scraper, and it has here cut out into it a 3 8 wrench, which looks a little bit aggressive to me in that it might weaken that tool. Then we have a medium sized screwdriver that has an inbuilt quarter inch wrench. And then we have here a two millimeter Allen key. Why would you want that? Well, the screws here are two millimeter Allen screws, and obviously you can remove this tool and use it on the tool itself. Then we have this scraper come all pointed with a scraping edge rather than a bladed edge, but nevertheless a really useful tool. Accessing the tools which invariably clump together and locking them, removing them and replacing them can be quite fiddly due to the way the mechanism works and does require a bit of practice and that will put some people off who prefer a more seamless operation. And it is the handling that is the drawback here. It's not as smooth or refined as something like the Leatherman Wave and you need to commit to understanding how the tool works to get the best out of it. But in return, what you do get is the unique ability to customize your multi-tool to your requirements and then change it as those requirements change and no other multi-tool offers that. And if that's what you want from your multi-tool, then this could indeed be a Leatherman killer. Before we get into the next tool, I'd just like to give a shout out to Ridge Wallet, the sponsor of this week's video. And for those that don't know, Ridge are on a mission to streamline your carry. They want you to ditch those out of date loyalty cards and ancient receipts and focus on what you actually need in your wallet day to day. So you can go from this to this. What we have here from Ridge is a simple solution, which also happens to be beautifully engineered. We have two flat sides that are held together with an elastic strap, which allows you to carry up to 12 cards. Then simply push up on the cutaway that allows you to fan the cards out and select the one you need. Then the beveled edge along the top allows you to easily put it back. Then on the back, we have this non-slip elastic strap to hold some cash and then you're good to go. I've had this matte white and black one for a while and this blue one here is part of the original aluminium range. And if you're looking for something a bit more exotic, then this forged ember is a combination of carbon fiber and epoxy resin, hard wearing and lightweight in each with its own unique pattern. There are in fact more than 30 color and material options to choose from and it's worth noting they all offer RFID protection against digital pickpockets. And Ridge is so confident in their wallet you can return it within the first 99 days if you don't love it. Having said that with over 2 million wallets sold and over 80,000 five star reviews it looks like a pretty safe bet to me. To complete the picture Ridge have also turned their attention to the other everyday carry dilemma key carry. To reduce bulk and noise and avoid holding your pockets and a stabbing pain in the groin, Ridge have created this key case to keep up to six keys contained, compact and easily accessible. And you still have a keyring attachment for your bulky car key and also a pocket clip. Together with the wallet, they make a great pairing and when purchased together, come with a generous discount. And speaking of discount, use my link and the John Gadget coupon code to get 10% off your order. You'll also find that in the description down below. And if all that wasn't enough, Ridge have teamed up with Hennessy, the performance car specialist, to give you a chance to win a brand new Hennessy Ford Bronco Velociraptor, or if you'd rather, $75,000 in cash. And this sweepstake runs throughout September 2023, and the winner will be announced in October. Now, you can enter for free by using my link and signing up to email or SMS, or for those making a purchase, you'll get one entry for every dollar spent and an extra 10 if you use my link and code. Code. So a big thank you to Ridge for sponsoring the channel and now back to the video. Here we have the SOG Power Access Deluxe. Now SOG have been serious about multi-tools for over 30 years and they have their own unique standout feature which is their compound leverage plier mechanism. 
This tool is designed in the USA and made in China and is guaranteed for life. And this is the next to biggest tool at Sogdo and it's priced at $80 in the US and more like £99 in the UK. And I have to say that first impressions are good. I like the stone wash finish and the design looks industrial, which I also like. And comparing it to the Leatherman Wave, you can see that it is actually quite a bit longer when closed and looks a lot bigger when open, but it weighs about the same. The action when opening up the pliers is really smooth and you have this unique compound leverage action which doubles the power at the plier head. Now the handles have to move quite a lot for this to happen when operating the pliers and some people don't like this, but it's not a problem in my view when gripping smaller items and worth the extra handling effort when dealing with bigger items because what you get with that is this super strength grip and cutting force. The pliers are always locked to the handles, so if they do jam when cutting, they can be easily released. And we do have integrated hard wire cutters here, but unfortunately they're non-replaceable. And when it comes to the steel used in this tool, I can only quote SOG who state they use all round stainless steels with similar qualities to the best 440 series metals. So I guess it's similar to what we see with the other tools. A great feature which SOG incorporate into their plier mechanism is a quarter inch bit driver in the end here. And all you need to do is simply position a bit there and it's held in place with a magnet and then grip it and the compound action ensures that the bit is held securely. And now you have a screwdriver in the end, which is a really nice feature. Okay, let's have a look at the other tools. And as you can see, they're all externally accessible. And like many tools these days, you have to rely on a bit of clumping to access the internal tools. And that's because the position of the fingernail ridge here is just too near the fulcrum and requires too much force for it to be of much use. So I find it best to open up one or more of the tools and then that gives you access to the tool you want. It's not ideal, but the spring tension is quite light and therefore access is not too difficult. All the tools lock open and are released by applying pressure on the back here. And that works really well. So looking at the tools on one side, starting with the main blade, and that is really thin for a tool of this size. Then we have a can opener with a small screwdriver on the end, a three dimensional Phillips. And then we have a precision small flathead screwdriver, which I think will be very useful. And then a medium flathead with a built-in bottle opener. And then we have a serrated blade, which is also really thin. And when I say thin, if we compare it with the Leatherman Wave, you get an idea as to what I mean. Then looking at the tools on the other side, we have a wood stroke plastic saw. Then we have what looks like a screwdriver, but it's actually a chisel. Then we have this tool here, which I'll come back to. This is actually a bit driver tool. Then we have an awl, really useful tool, which is bladed in this case and has a sewing eye. And then we have a file, cross cut on this side and single cut on this side. Looking at the bit driver tool here, this is to work with an included quarter inch bit kit and adapter. So you get the adapter, you get one of the bits, and then that goes on that tool here. And you do get a little bit of a wobble on here and I'm not sure how robust this will be. And apart from a little bit of extra reach you get with this tool, I actually prefer the quarter inch driver socket built into the end of the tool. So for me, I would prefer to swap out this tool for something else like scissors, for example, which are lacking in this tool. There's no pocket clip with this tool, but you do get a really nice pouch. The tool goes in there. And then you also have this sleeve for the supplied bit kit and it all fits in there really nicely. You also get the addition of some really nice embroidery on here. So is this a Leatherman killer? Well, not based on the internal tools, I would say when compared with something like the Wave, but if pliers are your main thing and especially the application of force, then that might just swing it for you. And let's not forget the price, which in my book makes this really good value for money.
This is the Gerber MP600 bladeless multi-tool. Now Gerber have been around longer than I have and joined the multi-tool race in 1991 with their multiplier which has been going strong ever since. Now I've had several of these in the past and I still have most of them but these are quite old now so I wanted to look at a current version for this comparison. As you can see, not a lot has changed over the years other than all my older ones have USA stamped on them to signify being made in America, whereas this new one doesn't and I believe is now made in Asia, possibly Taiwan. Now I've picked a bladeless multi-tool here which benefits countries like here in the UK where locking knife blades are generally banned for public carry. So in fairness, this would compete more with something like Leatherman's bladeless rebar which I have here. As you can see, this model is quite a bit longer than the rebar when closed, but only just a bit longer when the pliers are revealed. And if we put them side by side, you'll see that the handles on the Gerber are parallel when the plier drawers are closed. And that I actually find makes them a little bit harder to use. This newer version has replaceable hard wire cutters, and that's great because that didn't exist on any of my original Gerbers. And these hard wire cutters are triangular in shape and that means three changeable blades and not just one. And when it comes to single-handed opening of the pliers, it doesn't come any easier or faster than this. When it comes to accessing the other tools though, the Gerber starts to show its age. You need to open the handles and then the tools are internally accessed, which is a bit awkward. But whilst being a little on the tight side, the tools do seem to avoid clumping when accessed, which is really nice to see. Okay, let's see what tools we have here. And on this side, we start with this. And this is a saw with replaceable blades. Now this rem grip blade, which comes as standard, is not everybody's ideal choice, but you can swap it out. And this uses the U-shank style blades with the holes in and not the more accessible T-shank we see with the Leatherman Surge. Still a nice option though. Then we have a three-dimensional Phillips screwdriver, which is always nice to see, and then we have a can opener. And that's all we have on this side of the tool. So what do we have on the other side? Well, we have to start with these scissors. Now these scissors are Fiskar scissors because Fiskar now own Gerber. And Fiskar are a well-known scissor make. They are quite small. And if I try them with my scientific paracord snip test, it doesn't actually cut through in one go. And it's because they splay out a bit. Nevertheless, they are quite good at cutting because you do get quite a lot of leverage here and the blades are quite sharp. Then looking at the remaining tool set on this side, we have a file, cross cut on one side, single cut on the other, a small flathead screwdriver, a larger flathead screwdriver and a medium flathead screwdriver with a bottle opener. All the tools lock into place and utilize this slide mechanism to unlock and that works really well, although some people might be put off by the plastic nature of this slider. The tool set on the Gerber is very similar to that we see on the rebar. We've got a file, we've got a 3D Phillips and we've got a can opener. We've only got two flatheads, not three, and the saw is fixed, but you do get a very nice bladed awl and better scissors, which do pass the paracord snip test. The Gerber does come with a quality pouch, although I do find it very wide and bulky for this tool. So is this a Leatherman killer? Well, when compared with the rebar, it is a very close run thing and it could just come down to personal taste. The price is pretty much the same for both, which is $80 in the US and more like 90 to 100 pounds in the UK. And the Gerber actually feels more robust and that swappable saw blade is a great feature. But the rebar is lighter at 180 grams or 6.35 ounces versus 225 grams or 7.9 ounces for the Gerber. The Leatherman is more compact too with easier tool access and that would probably swing it for me. 
This is the Roxon Phantom. Now Roxon is not what you would call a main maker of multi-tools and this is a bit of a wild card in this lineup but Roxon have impressed recently with their innovation and value in some of their smaller multi-tools so we thought we would include this their flagship model in this comparison. The Phantom costs around 50 to 60 pounds in the UK and around $50 in the US and as you can see this is a bulky tool and if we put it alongside our benchmark wave you can see it is pretty much bigger in every respect and it's heavy too it weighs over 300 grams or over 10 ounces and it looks different to the others in this lineup and we do have some real innovation here now i'm not a massive fan of the cosmetic detailing on the scales here but that might be just me there is also some unwanted play here which we probably need to forgive given the budget price tag of this tool and despite the weight it does actually feel nice in the hand thanks to these rounded edges all around the tool okay let's start with the pliers which click nicely into place as springs drop into detent the pliers are spring loaded and have replaceable hard wire cutters of which a spare set is included in the box and the size of the tool when open is actually quite similar to that of the wave and when the pliers are open it gives us access to a substantial pair of scissors just press on the unlock button here and the scissors fold out like that then we can put the pliers away and when i say substantial these are in fact the biggest scissors i've seen on any multi-tool they are spring loaded and very capable easily passing our scientific paracord snip test as for the remaining tools they are all externally accessible the most interesting being the knife blade because as well as being single-handed opening and liner locked it's also interchangeable the standard blade is this tanto shape and the steel uses three cr15 mov which most would argue sits just below the 440 steel we have seen in the other multi-tools having said that these are seriously thick blades if i show you a comparison with the main blade on the Leatherman Wave. To swap the blade, simply release the two scale catches and then the scales come away and the blade can be removed. And there are a host of blade options to choose from and they seem to be available in groups of three. So I have here a clip point blade and also a sheep's foot blade and then my favourite, a utility blade. And they're all neatly presented in these individual cases, which all magnetically attach. So if I wanted to install the clip point blade, simply open that, put it in there like that, and then replace the scales, put the clips back. And now we have a clip point blade. Or if we wanted a utility blade, Simply remove the scales, put the utility blade in place, put the scales back, clip. And now we have a utility blade in the multi tool. On the opposite side to the blade, we have a liner locked wood or plastic saw, so that's a nice one to have. And then we have four smaller tools in the side here, and that brings us to another element of innovation because this button here releases the tools, which can then be grabbed and fanned out, so you can select the one you want. And here we have a can opener with a small flathead screwdriver, a bladed awl, a two-dimensional Phillips screwdriver, and a chisel with two sizes of wire stripper built in. And once the tool has been selected, it is locked in place and it's released by using that same release switch, but pressed the other way. And that works really well. The Phantom does come with a basic hard case, but it does add to the overall bulk of the tool. 
So is this a Leatherman killer? Well, it is a tempting proposition, particularly when factoring in the great scissors and the blade exchanger. On handling though, it is noticeable that the quality and the fit and finish is not up there with Leatherman and the others in this lineup. And I would need some convincing on the durability of this tool in hard use. I also don't welcome the added weight and bulk of the Roxxon. However, when you factor in the price, it gets a lot more interesting and the Roxxon then becomes hard to beat for both value and the features on offer. Before I introduce the final competitor, I wanted to quickly recap the tools we've seen compared to Leatherman. The GOAT tool is ingenious and practical for the multi-tool enthusiast, but somewhat unrefined for the general user. The SOG has a great pair of pliers and that ingenious quarter inch bit holder, but is let down by the internal tools. And the Gerber is tough and capable, but it's showing its age when it comes to internal tool access. And the Roxxon has great innovation, but at this price can't really compete on quality. So you can see from this why Leatherman and particularly the Wave still dominate. They get the important things right and then they keep on innovating, learning and improving as they introduce new tools. And that's why there's so much excitement over the Leatherman arc expected for later this year. The final competitor, in my view, is perhaps the only current challenger to Leatherman and particularly the Wave, and that is Victorinox with their Spirit X. All the tools are individually accessible and lockable with zero clumping and all open with total precision and no other multi-tool does this. And all the tools without exception are useful and capable and the whole thing is beautifully engineered. In fact, it's often described as being too nice to use. And if you want to see a detailed comparison of the Spirit and the Wave and find out which one I prefer, then you'll need to check out this video right here. And if you want to see my top seven Leathermans to date, then check out this one down here. So that's it for this one. Thank you as always, and I hope you can join me in the next one.